We are going to take some notes on composition right now, so you're going to need a, a piece of paper. Um, if you don't get all the notes as we're going, that's okay. You can always go back and fill them in. Um, you'll have access to them after this video is over. So we're going to start with the definition. Composition is the arrangement of the parts in a work of art. Usually according to the principles of design, the purpose of composition is to create a sense of movement to motivate the viewer to look along a particular path created by the artist. So you're going to write that on the top of the page. Again, you can kind of fill it in now or you can get that in later. Um, the main idea behind this is composition is really about how artists place objects in the picture plane to move the viewer's eye through the picture. There are six main types of composition. Oval, pyramid, linear, arc, um, diagonal, and L shape. So it's about the movement created, so it's about how that artist places the objects in the drawing to really move the eye in this soft curve for the arc, or how they place the tape and that leads into the stapler, into the scissors to create that strong um, diagonal of art through the piece here. If you are able to really create dynamic compositions um, and really use that space, you're going to be able to make much better artwork. So the first one here you can write all these into is, is an oval. If you had several oranges and you arranged them in this fashion here, the viewer's eye would travel from one orange to the next in that soft curve, creating uh, an oval movement. For a pyramid, your eye moves across the bottom of the picture plane into a diagonal and back into a diagonal to complete that movement. Um, linear is the most common composition type uh, most pictures you see are kind of straight across the middle like that. Um, it's also the most static composition, the most uh, kind of boring of all compositions. Because it's used so much, it gets redundant. So arc can go two different ways. You can create a soft curve that curves from kind of bottom to top, or curves from top to bottom. Again, the diagonal just moves from corner to corner through the piece, and there's two ways you can do that as well. You can go from bottom left to top right, or top left to bottom right. Uh, L shape, that one's pretty self-explanatory. You've got a strong vertical, and then it moves across the bottom as well that can go backwards too. So you can have that vertical on the right side and that can move your eye from right to left on the bottom as well. When you look at pieces of art you'll be able to uh, kind of diagnose each one as a specific composition. You'll be able to kind of take a look and say well that has an art composition or a linear composition or a pyramid composition. Uh, they usually fit into one of these six categories. So with this composition piece, we're going to do some observational drawing. Observational drawing is really the foundation of being an artist, in my opinion. I think it's so important to be able to draw realistically and draw something the way you see it. I think it really helps inform all of your other artistic practices, whether it's making a sculpture or painting, whatever you're doing. It's a huge advantage to be able to do it well, to be able to draw realistically. So with observational drawing, what you're going to want to do is place any object that you're going to draw in your view and really kind of study it as you're drawing. Um, so this is a pair of headphones here. That's what I'm going to draw. You're going to be drawing three objects to create clear movement in your composition. So one thing that you might want to do is kind of mark off the movement that you're looking to create. I'm going to do a diagonal composition, so it's kind of going to go from there to there to there. I'm going to start with these headphones. I'm going to put those uh, right in the middle. So, let's paper down a little bit here, too. A couple quick tips in terms of drawing realistically. Um, the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to start by just kind of targeting off 
I'm gonna make these pretty large. Bringing in some targets just to kind of place the object on the paper. This can save yourself a lot of time in terms of making mistakes later on, just kind of making some notches uh, to figure out where that's going to sit on that paper. And then you're going to really follow and track that contour. You're going to want to start lightly because if you're drawing realistically you can expect to make some mistakes. So I'm just going to kind of follow along on that contour. If you've had my class before you know about the one two look technique. I think that's a very valuable technique for drawing realistically. Basically every two seconds you are moving your eyes from the paper to the object. You're observing it, you're studying it, and you're kind of tracking it. So if you count as you're drawing every two seconds, you look at the object, I think you'll find that you'll have more success with matching the contour line of that shape. So I'm kind of following along here. I'll pull around this edge. I'm really tracking the edge. Um, if you track the edge of the shape and you really match the contour, you're off to a good start. I like to start with contour first and then move into the different parts of the object, details, shading, whatever else I want to add. I made this pretty big, so I'm going to have to draw some smaller objects for my uh, the rest of my composition. Follow that along right there. And uh, just so this doesn't get too boring, I'm going to speed this up and kind of finish the rest of the drawing. <laughs> 